Good afternoon, my name is Ralph Friedrichs and welcome to Take Your Life Guide. Today we're going to talk about something that's been in the headlines a lot, not only nationally but globally, uh, but it's also hit here close by to my home, my community, my uh, state. Uh, here on Long Island, the local newspaper Newsday has been uh, put in special editions about heroin use among teens and how it has skyrocketed in the last few years tremendously. So we're going to talk about that, but as I always do, I just want to give a shout out to Dr. Lewis Gonzalez over at Starting Point. You can find him at 844-414-8444. His website is www.startingpointmn.com. What he does is he has two entities. The first entity would be for people that uh, have an addiction that need to have somebody walk with them 24 hours at a time, day by day, from addiction to recovery. That is what Dr. Luis Gonzalez does. He is a addiction recovery coach, as am I. On the other side of his business, he also teaches people, trains people, how to become an addiction recovery coach. For an example, I received a phone call from a person named Ann, or Annie I should say, and she was very much interested. So I uh, forwarded that information to Dr. Luis Gonzalez and Annie did call Dr. Luis Gonzalez and I believe she is going to uh, enter into his program and I just want to wish Annie luck. Uh, I know she's going to do very well and uh, if any questions I am here for you, you can call me at 631-599-0218. So congratulations to Annie for making that leap into becoming an addiction recovery coach. So that's what he does on the other side. If you have the personality, the professionalism, and uh, the um, uh, passion, that is uh, certainly a great criteria. Those are great criteria to have and some sort of addiction background, whether it's your own fighting or fighting for someone else or with someone else. This person, Annie, I spoke to on the phone today, I could tell that she has the passion, professionalism, and the personality, and I know she will do well under the uh, educational program through Dr. Luis Gonzalez. So call him, 844-414-8444. Now, as far, let me just move this because I feel like I'm catching a lot of the reflection. Um, let's move this this way a little bit. There you go. So you folks get to see my shrine a little bit. Okay. Um, so what uh, Dr. Luis Gonzalez does is those two entities. Now, we also have my websites. I have www.clearviews, that's C-L-E-A-R-V-I-E-W-S-I-N-F-O. What that clearviews.info is all about is informational items for you. I have now created almost 130 videos. Most of them go anywhere from uh, one hour to one, <coughs> excuse me, to one hour and 10 minutes. Folks, these videos are so exciting to watch because it is not just the information that I read to you, but I speak to you from the bottom of my heart. My experiences, experience of other people's when I do the interviews. You know, in the beginning of this video, you probably heard some of those interviews. At the end of this segment, you will see credits that I have created, I believe about 10 slides on there, different uh, areas uh, or different rehab and treatment centers for the people from Long Island. Take a look at those. There is information on there and I want everyone that is watching, even if you're not on Long Island, to pass that information on to people that you might know on Long Island. And that is directly right after this segment. So reach out to me on clearviews.info. There are doctors, psychologists, and psychiatrists that have given information for you. That's right, for you to take a look at and for you to educate yourself because you cannot fight addiction without educating yourself for what is addiction, how is addiction there. Are addiction the choice of the victim? And the answer to that is no. An addiction is a disease. Once it gets a hold of you, it is very hard to get rid of. However, you can with two things. The first thing is to stop denying that you have an addiction, and the second thing would be to reach out to your higher power, which we're going to talk about a little later. The other website that I have is www.clearreform.com. Now, Clear Reform is exactly what Dr. Lewis Gonzalez does. I will walk with you from your addiction to your recovery daily, 24 hours at a time. I will never ever speak about your past. We don't discuss your past because it's merely what's important is today and tomorrow. My cat just walked in again and here we go with the nose. 
but that's what it is. So it's clear reform. And what does the reform stand for? It means to transform you, reform you from your addiction side to your recovery side. And both my two websites start with the word clear. And what that stands for is community, lessons, and power, addiction, recovery. It is all of us as a community working together, informationally uh, uh, sharing all our experiences and our information. It is us working together to make this community a better community and to make this globe a better globe. This is a very lengthy one. I had to kind of separate it into two sections. Uh, the one section is immediately after that, and that is the information because it was just too much for me to read of different rehab and treatment centers here on Long, uh, Long Island, including phone numbers, folks. Uh, I'm going to read a lot of this. So, uh, like I said to Andy today on the phone, um, a lot of people, they don't realize that when I speak from the heart, you can tell because I show a lot more passion and compassion. When I read, it's a little tougher because I am reading a font that's not very large taped onto my laptop here to, to do these videos. So it's not the easiest thing to do. However, I do get through them and I hope that each and every one that is watching uh, enjoys these uh, videos. These videos are on Facebook, they're on Twitter, these videos on Google, Dogpile, Dig, Blogger, uh, Facebook, uh, on three different pages and three channels on YouTube, uh, Take Your Life Back 1, 2, and 3. So they're all over the place, so do enjoy them. So here we go, let's dive right into it. Heroin use among teen, teens on Long Island have skyrocketed. And for many kids, the consequences are fatal, as you can imagine. The drug has dropped in price, increased in purity, and has become fairly easy to obtain in communities across Nassau and Suffolk counties. A bundle of heroin, uh, heroin priced at $150 in 2006 now costs just $80. Smaller quantities can be held for as little as $7 uh, on Long Island, about the same price as a pack of cigarettes. And that is a drug, the same price as a pack of cigarettes. The drug typically snorted by teens has steadily increased the purity and is often used in combination with prescription drugs like oxycodone. That is so lethal when you start mixing two different drugs. Both the Nassau and Suffolk County Police Departments have increased the number of heroin-related arrests and the National Drug Intelligence Center, which is within the Justice Department, ranked heroin alongside the cocaine as the most serious drug threats in the New York area. Heroin use among teens on Long Island first started to get some long overdue attention after an overdose death of 18-year-old Natalie Chiappa last June. Natalie was found dead in the garage following a drug and alcohol-filled house party in Seaford, which is on Long Island for United States. Following her daughter's death, Doreen Chiappa told reporters, or I should say Chiappa, it's difficult to admit your child took heroin. And it, it, it is, because you never want to think that possibly your child is doing something that uh, your child shouldn't be doing. Um, it is difficult for us to admit to ourselves. She was beautiful, she was smart, she did not look like an heroin, uh, a heroin addict. Folks, do I look like I'm an alcoholic? Oh, I, I am battling and I am recovering and because you'll never beat it. An addict, an alcoholic, come in different shapes, forms, sizes, colors, races, it doesn't matter. Personalities, rich and poor. It, it, that's just how it is, folks. And uh, you can never tell. If you suspect your son and daughter is using drugs and or alcohol, please call Long Island CADD at 516-747-2606. We can review the warning signs with you, help you come up with a plan of action, which we always talk about action plans, and uh, talk with you about the treatment options for your teens. Don't wait. Call us today. So folks, there is hope. This is New York CNN News. The first time Chris shot up heroin, he was too scared to do it to himself. So his friend did it for him. Nice friend to help him. When he was 16, he would shoot up mostly in his feet. I guess maybe the pain is less for needles there. Uh, I would shoot up mostly in my feet, he said. It escalated to almost five to six bags every time I shot up. He spends hundreds of dollars a day feeding his addiction. I was stealing money from my parents. I was doing illegal actions with my friends. I broke into different houses. I've done all the above besides selling myself like a prostitute. Mom said, heroin is easier to get than beer. That's, that's pretty sad. 
five things you did not, I repeat, you did not know about heroin. Chris, who we just spoke about, who is now 17, is in a treatment and outreach house, a long-term long substance abuse program on Long Island, New York for youths ages 12 to 17. His road to recovery hasn't been a smooth ride. However, after three failed attempts to outpatient treatment, Chris entered an inpatient program at Outreach, but he ran away five times the first few months. That is not uncommon, said John Benza, Vice President of Adolescent Services at the Outreach Program. It re really requires an extended amount of time, he said. Now I'm going to have to look up, and that's way up there today, so bear with me. For Chris and the others, Outreach Treatment means removing any distractions to recovery. There are no cell phones, no personal television, uh, work computers allowed, except for doing homework. That right there is enough to send any kid spiraling, I guess, but they do that for a reason, and that is to create an atmosphere of total isolation from the uh, luxuries of life to have you concentrate on recovery. Chris's parents said that a short treatment programs, he has made new connections with other users and caused him to relapse when he got out. Chris's parents said that in short-term treatment programs, so remember this is an inpatient one, so every time he got out he got involved with the wrong crowd which is very easily uh, done and, and I've spoken about this even with alcoholics, you need to surround yourself with people that are also fighting alcoholism, not that are alcoholics, but fighting and winning the war on addiction. We're able to have them here for a longer window where we really are able to shift their values, Venza said, who remember he is the uh, Vice President Adolescent at the Outreach Program. We do very intense work with families, so we help shift the family support system. From heroin and addict to PTA mom, and I assume they're going to be talking about Chris's mothers. Heroin use has exploded in what is being described as an epidemic on Long Island, where addiction counselors are seeing users as young, now listen to this, as young as 12 years old. Many, many, many from middle class suburban families, several factors have uh, contributed to the perfect storm of addiction, according to experts. Among them, proximity to major airports, transportation centers, and a statewide crackdown on prescription pain killers that has the unintended effect of pushing more kids to cheaper and more accessible heroin. I mean, those painkillers, yeah, they have uh, been able to crack down on the streets, but we need to crack down on our own home. We need to crack down on our own medicine cabinet. The trend to, appears to be national. The Center for Disease Control Prevention says U.S. drug poisoning deaths involving heroin went up 45% from 2006 to 2010. And the Drug Enforcement Administration says the amount of heroin seized each year in the southwest border increased to, listen to this, 232% from 2008 to 2012. That is huge. And the trend is bad for younger users. Among four age groups, drug poisoning deaths involving heroin increased only for the youngest group ages 15 to 24 from 2008 to 2010. For all age groups, the number of deaths was steady or went down, the CDS, uh, CDC said. So you can see the ages 15 to 24. That is the most trying time for most individuals anyway because you are, you are, you know, first of all, at 15, you've seen a lot of things in your own home happening, whether they're good or bad, and we're going to discuss the being role model at your, in your home. In Long Island, it's gotten so bad that one officially dubbed Long Island Expressway, which runs from east uh, across the island from New York City to the Heroin Highway. That's what this one uh, uh, individual has called the Heroin Highway, not the Long Island Expressway. That's, that's pretty sad. I'm going to read over here now. Our heroin deaths probes, probes created equal. What will happen? And what we're seeing now is some attention on overdose, attention on treatment and recovery. And then, in a few days, we'll go back to life as it was. So, what this pretty much is saying is that we can't just concentrate on it because it's uh, in our 
minds and in our thoughts. Now, this has to be a follow through from day to day, week to week, year to year. Hoffman, Hoffman was one of the estimated 100 people yesterday who lost their lives through a fatal overdose. This is an individual that had died. Reynolds said Monday, we probably could have prevented most of these overdoses through prevention, access and treatment, recovery and support, yet we didn't. So each one is an indictment of what we failed to do, but it also should energize us to say we need to get serious about the disease. And Reynolds sees another disturbing trend. Ten years ago, if you used two or three bags of heroin a day, you were considered a chronic heavy user. For kids these days, that is breakfast. The quantities have gone up, the quality has gone down, the prices have gone down. That's pretty sad. How heroin kills you. A deadly one. A harem, heroin has killed a record number of people on Long Island in the last two years, data shows. Heroin arrests on Long Island by the DEA are up 163% in just one year. Reynolds says he has seen a sevenfold increase in patients in the past five years. Remember who this guy Reynolds was? 80% uh, of them from heroin and other opiates uh, users are often fit to the stereotype of heroin addict. Many are cheerleaders, athletes, straight A students from loving homes. Folks, we're going to talk about this right after this last segment because a lot of it happens in your own home. It's called role leadership. You couldn't have locked, I, I'm sorry, you couldn't have looked at my daughter and said she was a heroin addict, said Susan Rolfo, whose daughter Megan died of an overdose at the age of 22. The girl was beautiful. She had blonde like the rest of these kids. She was blonde, like absolutely beautiful, and you didn't know it. Heroin is all over. Any addiction, they're silent killers. And it is up to us as the parents, as the grandparents, and as the guardians to educate our children and to set an example. But let's finish this and we'll talk about that. My state and addiction stranglehold, stranglehold I should say. Parents are caught between denial and every addiction has that denial. So even if the parents do not have an addiction, they are denying that their perfect little children have an addiction, but they need to wake up and the shame over the stigma of having a heroin addicted child. There is no shame in admitting. Matter of fact, when I was talking to this lady that I spoke about in the beginning, her name is Annie, I said that there is no shame, and I wasn't referring to her just in general, this is just a generalization, there is no shame in admitting. Matter of fact, I think people will respect you more when you finally admit you have a problem because then People are seeing that you are trying to make a change. You are trying to save your life, and you are going to take your life back. Chris's mother, Joanne, said she was shocked to learn her son was using a drug heroin. My son, she said? No way. Absolutely no way. How did I not see that, she asked. Chris says he believes his 11 months at outreach saved his life. I put myself in so many circumstances where I could have died, he says. Being able to say that I have different ways that I can manage my emotions besides getting high, it makes me very happy and excited to go through my future. And what Chris is saying is what I've been saying on every single my, one of my videos. Let me adjust this real quick here. Every single one of my videos, and that is there is life outside of drugs and or alcohol. He'll begin the future next week when he graduates from the outreach program, and congratulations to you, Chris moves back home with his parents and faces the challenge of staying sober. And Chris, if you're watching, my recommendation to you is never ever give up on yourself or on your recovery plan. And always, and I say always, come up with the proper educational uh, uh, game plan or action plan to continue your path in sobriety because you are succeeding and you are taking your life back. His mother Joanne says the program not only saved her son, it saved us, meaning her family. Folks, this is a real story of real situation going on. And this is not just an isolated story. This is a story of thousands on Long Island and millions in the country and globally. It is all of us that need to wake up of our surroundings. The people around us are either addicted to alcohol and or drugs. 
So we, as a community, need to use our lessons to, to empower addiction recovery. We do. We're going to recap on this a little bit from now again, but there was one paragraph that was in this article, and I had said to you folks that let's go back to Rome on the when she said he was growing up in a perfect home. I cannot believe how could he do this, folks. Why is it that the age is between 15 and 24 that's most overdoses and the most usage? It is because at 15, your son or daughter already has 15 chapters in their book of life from birth until the end of time for them. From birth, when God created your child and gave you, that's right, you, the parent, the grandparent, the guardian, the responsibility to start writing the chapters in your son or daughter's book of life, your responsibility is between 0 and 18. Now, most people, they start around 15 and overdosing, and why is that? Let's, let's take a good look at ourselves. What has been going on in your home, folks? From day one of birth until this child is 15, 16, 17, or 18, if they survive that long, if they don't overdose accidentally, have you been setting the role model example that you really need to? Let's take a self-inventory, shall we? How is the smoking situation coming in your home? Are you smoking in front of your children? If you answer yes, what is your action plan? It is to stop smoking, and if you can't stop smoking, stop smoking in front of them or in your home. Let's look at another issue. Is there drinking going on in your home? Are you consistently and constantly sitting there with a drink in your hand day after day? And your young son or young daughter sees this every day. Ask yourself this. Is that good leadership? Is that a good role model? And if you can answer that yes, then you have bigger problems than I can even imagine. But the answer has to be no. So what is your action plan? That is to stop drinking, hopefully stop drinking at all, and finally accepting the fact that you might have a problem. But if you can't do that, at least don't drink at home in front of your children anymore. That is your action plan. How is the language being used at home? Are we using the Webster Dictionary type of language or are we using profanity constantly? If the answer to this is also that you have a tendency of yelling a lot and screaming and using profanity, that needs to be cleaned up. And God forbid, if there is any physical abuse going on in your home, folks, what is the action plan for that? Well, I'll tell you what the action plan is. If you're the abuser, I'm not going to tell you don't do it at home because I'm going to tell you you can't do it at all. So if you're the abuser, before anything goes any further, go see a therapist or a counselor. And if you're the victim, you need to call the authorities. It is easier to have your spouse or your loved one handcuffed and taken out of your home and hopefully at that point maybe he or she will get some treatment than for the authorities to be called to your home and have you taken out in the body bag. A punch here and a slap there will eventually escalate to a knife or a gun. So. When I asked you this question, is there any physical abuse, if you even have a hesitation of answering that, you need to go see help. And if you're the victim, you need to call for help. Those are the four most commonly misused examples of uh, role leadership. The drinking has to not be in the home, the smoking has to not be in the home, the profanity certainly cannot be in the home, and the physical or verbal abuse cannot be at all, whether you're home or outside your home. So this explains why our youngsters at 15 to 24 are falling apart on us. Because you, as the adult, as the parent, have not done your job. How do we change that? Well, we can't dwell on what has been, because it's done. But what you can do starting today, September 27th, 
2014 is you can start rewriting those chapters in not only your book of life, but in your children's book of lives. Remember, God entrusted you with a child, and God is demanding that you are part of that child's book of life. Mostly between zero, which is birth, until 18. You need to get this child strong enough to go into society with a shield on. But if you continue smoking, drinking, profanity, using profanity, and, and or maybe even hitting, your child will feel so comfortable when it leaves home because that's what society is all about. And then don't be shocked if your child ends up on Jerry Springer or on uh, uh, Nari or here's an example, Bill, Bill Cunningham. Don't be surprised. Last night I get a text about uh, going on a Bill Cunningham show. Uh, about a month ago, I was interested in trying to get on there to help someone else, but that has kind of fallen to pieces now. So I text him back saying, this is what I do. Uh, take a look at some of my videos. And I gave him some of my videos. And they, this morning, contacted me again and would like for me to be a guest on there as a... Uh, uh, not as a uh, person other than a mediator between people that have addictions and are seeking recovery. And of course I accepted that and uh, as time goes on I will let every one of my audience know when that might take effect. But this is what I'm trying to tell you folks. Don't let your children end up on those shows. And when they do and they blame you and you know that you have done the right thing that means you haven't been a bad role model, that you've been leading by example. Then it doesn't matter what you could say. If they blame you, you know different. But if they blame you and you know you have not been a role model, you have become a failure as a parent. It's never too late to change. Start today, September 27, 2014. Make today a new day the rest of your life. Not only change the chapters in your children's books, but start changing your own. Because if you have a problem with drugs and alcohol, you need to change. You need to do two things. Number one is to stop denying, which is the hardest thing in the world to do, because I denied for many years. So I get it. I understand. It's not the easiest thing to do. But when you hit rock bottom, and you'll know when you hit rock bottom, you'll reach up and do the number two on my list and that is to reach to your higher power you will ask God for guidance and direction and he will do exactly what you ask him to do he will guide and direct you from that point on you will set up a new action plan for not only your life but for your recovery plan start being that role model that God wanted you to be from day one Stop denying that you have a problem and start your new life today. Take your life back September 27th, 2014, like I took my life back in 2013, and like millions are taking that life back. But it all starts with you, and it starts with, starts with you today. So how do we do that? Well, we can go to AA. AA has the 12-step step program. They also have the 90-90, which means they want you to do 90 meetings consecutively in 90 days. You'll sit in a classroom or a church atmosphere type and share stories. Folks, it has helped millions of people since 1936. However, I did attend five, six times and I felt I needed to be more active. This is how I am so active in my own recovery. It is to put a face and a voice into your living room or your kitchen or wherever you might watch my videos to show you that I am a real person with a real problem and who is not ashamed to go on video and post it all over the internet and all over different uh, areas. A couple schools have used me already. Uh, I believe there's a couple other entities. I am not ashamed to go on and tell you because there is no shame in my game. What would be shameful 
as if I kept denying the fact that I had a problem and kept going through life hurting people. That is shameful. So try AA. You can switch over to my method and try that, which is setting up an action plan, which is to do my videos, which is to go onto my websites, which is to follow the 24 hour at a time rule, one day at a time. And if 24 hours is too much for you to shoot for, you can shoot for three, uh, uh, four, six hour sessions. Meaning sessions, when I say session, I mean shoot for six hours from now and say, let me try to stay sober six hours. And then when you reach that six hours, reach for another six hours, etc., etc., etc. You get it, right? And if that's too much, look at your watch and say, oh, it's 11 o'clock. I'm going to shoot for 11.02. Because no matter how little amount of time at a time that you are sober, that is an accomplishment. So try my methods. You can text me anytime, 631-599-0218. You can also call me, 844-405-HELP. The reason I have help at the end of my number is to help you. Because you are seeking help. You can email me. Clear Reform. That's C-L-E-A-R-R-E-F-O-R-M at Yahoo. You can go on my uh, on Facebook. We have an open group now for Clear Reform. And anyone's welcome. Uh, all my videos are posted there daily. My newer videos. You can also go to my two pages, which is clearviews.info and clearreform. Come join us there. You can find me on Twitter, Dig, Dogpile, Yahoo, uh, Facebook, uh, Google. The list just goes on. YouTube, three channels. I am here, not just for the one to four hours daily to help you via video and setting up all these special little effects and giving you all the little quotes. I am here for you whenever, and I mean whenever you need me. There are times in the middle of the night I'll be getting a text from someone. And yes, it's a little tough on me sometimes, but the reward of knowing that I can possibly help two people with, with each of these videos, just two people, and I can guarantee you one person will always be me, because this is my recovery. This is how I battle my addiction. This is it's 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 very simple. You can try this method, you can try AA, you can crisscross and try both. And if you have a problem that's severe that you can't trust yourself around a refrigerator or a liquor cabinet when nobody's home that you might sneak those drinks in or snort the coke or do the crack, go to the treatment center like like this guy Chris on this story that we just spoke about. This guy Chris Chris tried the outpatient so many times that he kept relapsing. So what did he do is exactly what I'm recommending for you to do, is to go to an inpatient treatment center. Do that for three, six, nine months, whatever you can. They do take insurance and they do take Medicaid. And if you don't have either, go on your state's website and see what is available for financially challenged people. If you still have a problem, text me and I will do my best to try to help you find some kind of rehab somewhere that will help you. You can text me at 631 folks. So now we spoke about this story right here, this epidemic that is on Long Island, that's a heroin. Among teens have been skyrocketing to uh, huge numbers. We have talked about how you need to start being a role model, how you need to continue writing your chapters in your book of life because one day you were born and the end of your death I mean the end of your time which is your death one day there won't be any more chapters so why not start today with a new chapter in your book remember the people will remember the last chapters in your book of life more than any chapters and God will forgive you for any chapters that were bad or less desirable or shady starting today. He will forgive all that. He just wants you to be a better human as well as you should be for you, for your spouse, for your loved ones, and more importantly as a leader and a role model for your youngsters. 
Folks, I've used this analogy before. We all go to sleep at night in the bed, and we all usually wear slippers around the house or sneakers or shoes, and we put them at the edge of our bed when we go to bed because nobody sleeps with their slippers, shoes, or sneakers on. Well, folks, I'm going to ask you to do this tonight, to take your shoes or your sneakers or your slippers and push them under your bed, halfway under your bed. And why is that, you might ask? Because tomorrow morning, when you wake up and you put your sneakers or your slippers or your shoes on, you will have to go down on your knees to go and get them because they're under your bed. When you're on your knees to go and get your slippers, shoes, or sneakers, just thank the Lord for another day where you get to breathe and enjoy this beautiful earth. Remember, when you go like this and take a deep breath in, somewhere, someone in this world is taking their last breath. When you blink your eye and your eye opens, somewhere on this earth, someone's closing their eye, will never open their eyes again. So while you're picking up your shoes, sneakers, or slippers, thank the Lord for another day that He's allowing you, and I repeat, He is allowing you to be on this earth. And start sharing with your fellow humans. That doesn't matter if it, your relatives or not, it could be as simple as a neighbor in need you have extra share sharing is caring so start sharing whatever you might have because remember this analogy and I'm full of analogies whatever your personal belongings are when the day you die nobody is going to put your personal belongings into a U-Haul truck so when the hearse is going to your final resting place there will not be a U-Haul truck following that because what you came to this earth with which was zero is exactly what you're leaving with which is zero now, I know you would feel 150,000 percent better by helping somebody with some of your possessions that you have extra when you help other people it builds your self-esteem up makes you feel good but when you have and you have and you have and you don't give Believe me, not only will you not feel good, but God will remember that. Another analogy is, if you have a loaf of bread and you know you only need a half, why not give that other half to somebody in need? Instead of letting that one half go stale and you're going to throw it out anyway. That is an analogy that makes more sense than anything in the world. A half a loaf of bread is better than no loaf of bread at all. That half a loaf that might go stale that you're going to end up throwing out is somebody else's treasure. Somebody else's stomach that might be filled just slightly. It starts at your home. It starts with your chapters in your book of life and you're responsible for your children's book of life up to about 18 or 19, 17 or 18. So you need to start changing a lot of things in your home. Let's recap on this, then we'll touch on a couple more things. Heroin use among teens on Long Island have skyrocketed. I'm going to read this. And for many kids, the consequences are fatal. The drug ha has dropped in price, increased in purity, and has become fairly easy to obtain communities across Nassau and, and uh, Suffolk counties. A bundle of heroin priced at $150 in 2006 now is available for $80. Smaller quantities can be uh, can be had for as little as $7 less than a pack of cigarettes. The problem here is, is that a lot of the heroin is being mixed with oxycodone and that is so lethal. These kids, they are getting their high and next thing you know they don't wake up, folks. And it doesn't matter how you as mommy and daddy are going to feel afterwards sent boss. There were no signs. I, my kid would never have done that. It is a lethal and silent killer overdose. There are only so many things that you control, but if you can control how you act and how you are in your own home, from your own children, that is certainly the best issue that you can do or the best thing you can do to help your child. Both Nassau and Suffolk County Police Departments reported an increased number of heroin-related arrests and the National Drug Intelligence Center, which is within the Justice Department, ranked heroin alongside of cocaine as the most serious drugs in New York State. 
heroin use among teens on Long Island first started to, to get some long overdue attention after the, after the overdose of an 18-year-old Natalie Chiappa last June. Natalie was found dead in the garage following a drug and alcohol-filled house party in Seaford. Following her daughter's death, Doreen Chiappa told reporters, it's difficult to admit your, do uh, your child took heroin. Denial, denial, denial. Not only for yourself, possibly for your children. You have to face reality. You can see signs. People say you can't. You can see signs. You just have to look. It was difficult for us to admit to ourselves. She was beautiful. She was smart. She did not look like an... And what is it? She didn't look like a heroin addict. What does a heroin addict look like? What does an alcoholic look like? Like me? I look perfectly normal to you. Yet, in my prime, and I hate to brag about it, I was drinking 10 to 15 shots of vodka. So what does an alcoholic look like? What does a heroin look like? Addict look like? If you suspect your son or daughter in using drugs or alcohol, please call Long Island CADD at 516-747-2606. We can review the warning signs with you. Do yourself a favor. Call 516-747-2606. Let them educate you on the warning signs. Prevent a future overdose. New York CNN. The first time Chris shot up heroin, this is Chris, we talked about him and his final uh, ending was a happy ending for him. The first time Chris shot up heroin, he was too scared to do it himself. So his friend did it for him when he was 16. I would shoot up mostly in my feet. The pain was less. It would escalate to almost five to six bags every time I shot up. He spent hundreds of dollars a day feeding his addiction. I was stealing money from my parents. I was doing illegal actions with my friends. I broke into other people's homes. I've done all the above besides selling myself like a prostitute. Mom said getting heroin for him was easier than getting beer. Chris, now 17, is in the treatment, uh, is in treatment at Outreach House on Long Island, a long-term substance abuse program on Long Island, New York, for youths ages 12 to 17. His road to recovery hasn't been a smooth ride, however. After three failed attempts to outpatient treatment, Chris has entered an inpatient where they can find him at the outreach. But he ran away five times in the first few months. That is not uncommon, said John Benza, Vice President of Adolescent Services at Outreach. It really requires an extended amount of time, he said. For Chris and the others at Outreach, treatment means removing any distract distractions to recovery. There are no cell phones and no personal TVs or computers allowed except for when they are doing homework. Teens in the program have mandatory jobs like service crew and can work their way up to leadership positions among their peers. See, that motivation, that reward system does even work in treatment centers. There is a primary focus on youths taking responsibility for their own behavior. Chris Parent said in short-term treatment programs, he made new connections with users that caused him to relapse when they all got out. We're able to have them here for a longer window where, where we are really able to shift the values that they believe in, Benzo said, he's the vice president. We do very intense work with families, so help shift the family support system. Now I'm going to fast forward because a lot of these statistics we know about. Let's go to the happy ending for Chris, which is Chris's mother, Joanne, said that she was shocked to learn her son was using drugs. Heroin? My son? Are you kidding me? No way. Chris says he believes his 11 months in outreach saved his life. I put myself in so many circumstances where I should have died, he says. Being able to say that I have different ways that I can manage my emotions besides getting high makes me very happy and excited to go through with for the rest of my future. He'll begin the next... He'll, be, he'll begin that future next week when he graduates from the outreach. outreach. Congratulations, Chris. Then he's going to move back home with his parents and he will face the challenge of staying sober. Chris, if you're listening, if you're watching, what I can tell you is to set up an action plan, never ever give up, and always do one day at a time, 24 hours. And Chris, if you are in my audience, if you need some help, Text me 631 or call me at 
uh, 405 help because that's what I'm here for Chris is for help and I am an addiction recovery coach I can motivate you and keep you uh, at a steady course one day at a time and I will continue helping you take your life back folks this was a very good segment it is a very unfortunate thing that I have to read however it is reality reality is that addiction will take whoever it wants to doesn't matter if you're black, white, rich or poor. Doesn't matter if you're a man or woman, a child, even senior citizens. I did a video on seniors. It doesn't matter. Here's the difference. If you let it, it will. If you learn to fight, it won't. Or it tries, but it won't. Include your God. Include an action plan. Set a goal for yourself. Come up with an action plan and achieve that goal. Three steps. Goal needs an action plan to achieve the goal. Do the four things at home. Uh, these are the four things at home you should not do. That is smoke, drink, use profanity, and physically abuse. You shouldn't use that anywhere. Those are the four things you should not, and I repeat, do not use at home in front of your children. Those are bad examples of role modelship. Include things in your home like a pat, uh, Passion, compassion, love, respect. And definitely let the sunshine into your heart and into your home and you will get positive results. Get rid of the darkness that might surround people, uh, children like Chris that he had. Get rid of that darkness because what he got was all negative results. What the outreach did for Chris, for example, is put a lot of sunshine into his heart and into his uh, personal space because now he's starting to reap the benefits of positive results and that's what you need to do within your own home folks that's what you absolutely need to do and why not start today September 27 2014 why not do that today and why not put your slippers under your bed so in the morning when you do go to your, to your, to your slippers sneakers or your shoes or whatever you wear to go to bed before you climb in uh, and, and stick by the edge. Just stick them under there so in the morning you can thank God that when you breathe that you're not one of the people that somewhere in the world is taking their last breath. Or when you blink that you're able to blink and not close your eyes forever. Thank the Lord Jesus that you have another day on this beautiful earth. Remember, treat every day on earth as if it would be your last day. Because one day, folks, it certainly will be. Treat every day when you write your chapters in your book that it might be your last chapter because one day it will be. Don't take for granted that there will be a tomorrow because it's not guaranteed for anyone. Why not make today the best day because tomorrow might not be there. So God forbid you should not wake up tomorrow morning. Your last chapter was a good chapter in your book of life. Folks, reach out to Dr. Luis Gonzalez at 844-414-8444, or you can find him on the website uh, at uh, www.startingpointmn.com. Dr. Luis Gonzalez has two entities. He has the coaching, which is the same thing I do, uh, only in a different location we are, but the epidemic, as you can tell, is so large in the United States that we can have a million coaches that's how many people have addictions and need help. Or you can also go to his other side of the uh, business that he has, and that would be to turn you into a coach, kind of like what Andy's trying to do. If you have the passion, and you have the professional, and the personality, and some addiction background, whether it's your own, or somebody in your family or a friend, call him, 844-414-8444. Go on to my website, www dot clearviews.info for all your information on addiction and recovery including over 120 almost 130 videos now go find me at www.clearreform.com if you need to have some coaching done for yourself your loved one or anyone you might know that is c-l-e-a-r-r-e-f-o-r-m text me with any thought any problem any issue at hand at 631-599-0218 Folks, I will let you know if anything should change as far as um, uh, 
next Thursday is Throwback Thursday. I haven't figured out exactly what I'm going to do, but I will say this. I do like to get feedback on what you want to see. I have 130 videos approximately. There has to be something that will get the majority vote that you've enjoyed in the past that you'd like to see again. All it is is a text, an email at clearreform at yahoo, C-L-E-A-R-R-E-F-O-R-M at yahoo. Text me, email me, let me know what you want to see. And folks, as far as the Bill Cunningham situation is concerned, I will wait to see when they want me to go on that show, and I will definitely let you know, and uh, hopefully I can get a copy of it and put it on my own video then, eventually. And... Um, that is pretty much uh, what I have to say about this whole situation. It it's really comes down to you get to make a choice. There's a fork in the road today, September 27, 2014. The fork of addiction or recovery. Which one do you want to take? I would choose the recovery if I was you. That's what you need to do. And if you choose that, there are so many people out there to help you doesn't necessarily mean me, doesn't necessarily mean Dr. Luis Gonzalez. What it does necessarily mean is you need help and you need help by someone. Whether it's AA, my methods, getting a hold of Dr. Luis Gonzalez, going to a rehab center or a treatment center. The bottom line is, is you need help, but all that we just spoke about cannot be achieved without your personal uh, higher power, your God or my God. You need to include him daily. For the simplest things as making a decision to the most complex decisions on do I finally stop drinking and doing drugs? Is your denial finally over today? Because if you keep denying, it's going to get worse. I promise you that. Life in sobriety is a lot better than when you have addiction. People that are out there that are afraid not to be able to drink and do drugs anymore because they don't know the unknown, take it from me, I am a perfect example of sobriety, of a sober person sitting in front of a camera daily educating you, helping me. I am here for you and for me. So are you ready to do this? And if you are, Call me, 631-599-0218, 844-405-HELP. Text me, email me, clearreform at Yahoo. Get a hold of Dr. Luis Gonzalez, 844-414-8444. Together, we can all help you take your life back. And remember, a sober today makes for a better tomorrow. And if you believe what I'm telling you here and in your heart, it will become clear no matter where you're watching me, it will become crystal clear. Clear community lessons empower addiction and recovery. Let it become clear. And let the sun shine into your heart and into your home. And when you do that, you'll get nothing but positive results. Eliminate the darkness. Get rid of the negativity around you. And remember that today, could possibly be the last day on earth for all of us. So why not make today a good chapter in your book of life? Remember, sober today today makes for a better tomorrow. And please stay sober. And God bless you.